So the next lesson that I'm going to talk about is about intro to circles. And as you can see here, I wrote down the, you know, important vocabulary words. So concentric circles mean that they have the same center. So one could be, one could be bigger and the other is a smaller as long as they share the same center. Um, secant line touches a circle two times, um, while a tangent line crosses it only once. Okay, I'm just going to read through the definitions so we can focus on the computations later on. Now, in this figure, this line is tangent to the circle, okay, um, because it touches the circle at only one point. And this portion here is called the radius. All right. So if I have, um, if I have a circle with a tangent line, uh -huh. so this is what I don't like about writing on a slate. It's kind of hard to draw. So let me try this. So if I have a circle and the tangent line touches the circle only once, okay, so let's move that a little bit. Now, um, okay, now the next thing I gotta do is find my pen. So if I draw the radius from the center of the circle, it makes a right angle at that corner. So in other words, they're perpendicular, right? They make a 90 degree angle. So why is that important? That's important because in ingenuity later on, they're gonna give you some, some triangles. Oh, where's my pen? Here. So if they give you triangles like this and you have to find like missing parts of the triangle, then what are you going to do? You're going to use the property that this triangle is a right triangle. And why is it a right triangle? Because the point of, you know, tangency over here is actually a 90 degree angle. Okay. Um, next, diameter. What's the difference between a radius and a diameter? Now, this is only a radius because it starts from the center and ends on a point. Now, <clears throat> if you want to draw a diameter, you have to pass through the center. Okay, so it has to be from one end point to another. Okay, and then you have to contain the center. Now, what if, what if I move this and, and not contain the center, then what do you call this? So a line segment that starts from an end point there and another end point here, just imagine it's shorter, is called a chord. So that's that word right here. So what's the difference between a chord and a diameter? A diameter has the center. A chord doesn't. So a trick question, is a diameter a chord? What do you think? Can you type that in the box? Is a diameter also considered a chord? Say yes or no. What do you think? Is a diameter a chord? Yes or no? Anybody? Yes or no? Come on, type in the box. Is a diameter also a chord? Anyone? No? Okay, and the other answer is yes. All right, the correct answer. Okay, keep going. Another one. Another one. Angel, you answered yes and no. Come on, you got to make up your mind. <laughs> okay, so going back to the question. Now, um, whether the line segment um, has the center or you know not it is still considered a chord in fact the diameter is the longest chord okay so all diameters are chords they are the longest um chords in a circle okay next is the central angle now let me erase all these extra marks over here okay so the next is um a central angle. So what is a central angle? A central angle starts from um, from the center and ends on a point in a circle. So that's a central angle. And guess what? There's a relationship between um, highlighter. There's a relationship between this angle over here, the central angle, and the arc. 
Now those two have special names, okay? You can find them over here. You see this one? Central angle is equal to its intercepted arc, and that's going to be used several times in ingenuity. So what does that mean? Well, what if your central angle measures, let's say, if this is 25, okay, that's too big a font, but bear with me. So if this angle is 25 degrees, then what is the measure of the intercepted arc? So you can think of this like a Pac-Man, you know, that game. So this mouth is opening to that. So the opening here is just equivalent to this one. So that means this intercepted arc, where's my 25? There you go. So that's intercepted arc is also 25 degrees. So they're equal to each other. You're going to memorize that. Okay, so using that, if I have if I have a semicircle, I'm just going to keep copying it so I don't have to like draw a new one. If I have a semicircle, a semicircle is like half a circle, right? So this is a straight angle. You know, in geometry A, you learn a straight angle is 180. So that means if the angle, um, if the angle here is not 25, but we're going to change that to 180. So if the angle here is 180, because it's a straight angle, then what is the measure of the corresponding um, arc? So the arc, which is this one, the one on top, right? Either on top or at the bottom, it doesn't really matter. Now that's also going to be 180 degrees. And specifically, you call that um, a semicircle. I think I indicated over here, I wrote it down. Yeah, a semicircle is half of a circle. Okay, now what's the difference between a major arc and a minor arc? So it's like your acute angle and your obtuse angle. So if your arc is greater than 180, okay, um, so then that means it's called a major arc. But if it's smaller than 180, then it's going to be minor arc. So how does that look like? Um, Where's my pen? Suppose um, my pen is not working right now for some reason. So let me use the highlighter here. So let's say I have an arc on the circle. There you go. And um, I, na I named this point A. And then another here, let's say point B. Okay, imagine that's a B, and then this one is a C, right? So that's more than a semicircle. That's more than 180 degrees. So that means um, it's going to be a major arc. And look how I named it here. When you're naming a major arc, you use three letters. But if you're naming a minor arc, you only use two letters. Okay, so for example, from A to B, that's only a minor arc because it's less than 180 degrees, right? And so is BC, because that's less than 180 degrees. But if you add them together, if you combine them together, then that's going to become a major arc already. Does that make sense? Um, okay. Now, going back to this one. So, I, we can do the Schoology already together. Um... Regarding classifications of triangles, we've learned this in Geometry A. So, scaling triangles have no congruent sides. Isosceles, two congruent sides. Equilateral, three. These are the classifications according to the number of congruent sides. But if you're going to look at their angles, um, their angles will be right, acute, or obtuse. So, if they have these properties, then these are the names of the um triangles. Now your Schoology assignment is about this. So I'm going to talk about this quickly and then we're going to pause. We're going to go to Schoology. So first is a parallelogram. So a parallelogram, now I need to draw. So a parallelogram, pardon my drawing, has two pairs of parallel sides. Okay, so in other words, the top the top 
and the bottom, they're parallel to each other. And the one on the left and right are also parallel to each other. Okay, so this one and the one on the right, they're also parallel. So you make two triangles to show that they're parallel to each other. Now, what are the other properties of a parallelogram? Now, in a parallelogram, the opposite sides are congruent. So, in other words, top and bottom are congruent, left and right sides are equal. Now, the diagonals bisect each other. So, the diagonals come from here to the opposite vertex. So, it doesn't mean they're equal to each other. It simply means that they cut each other into equal portions, like, like um, this portion here is equal to here, and then this one is equal to that one, right? And then their opposite angles are also congruent. So opposite angles are congruent. So meaning the top, no, the bottom left is congruent to the top right. Okay, and another property that they have is um, their consecutive angles. Let me write that down consecutive angles are supplementary. So what does that mean? It means that um, if this is angle A and this is angle B, they're consecutive because they're right next to each other. So when you add them, they equal to 180. So that's what supplementary means. So if you take any two, um, you can also have B and C together. So if you take any two that are right next to each other, they become they become equal to 180 okay now what we're gonna look at is you know look at these properties um, by summarizing them in a checklist so I'm gonna I'm gonna pause this recording for a while so we can upload this to your Schoology later on so you can watch it again <laughs>